Hi and welcome to PeaceMeg TV. In this week's video for Lightroom we're going to be checking out three power tips that are going to make your working in Lightroom just a little bit smarter, easier and more intuitive. So let's check out those tips right now. In this tip, we're going to make the library module just a little bit more intuitive and supply some more information to us. Now, this is great when you want to work through your images and you need to find out certain pieces of information like what camera they were shot on or what lens or dates and things. So we're going to take a look at how we can customize that. So we come to the view menu and we scroll down and we choose view options or we can press the keyboard shortcut of Control and J or Command J on the Mac and that will open up the library view options. As you can see, we have two options available. We have the grid view and we have the loop view. We're going to work in the grid view to start off with. And as you can see, we've got a range of different options available to us in there. And one of the first things we want to do is enable all of this extra information. And to do that, we just change it from being compact cells to expanded cells. And you can see that automatically opens up and gives us additional information on there. So now what we can do is we can go through, we can customize exactly what information is displayed so we don't have to rely on the default information. So if we take a look, you can see where we've got show header with labels. We've got the option says at the moment says camera and lens, crop dimensions, copy name and file base name and file extension. So if we move over, you can see that we're looking at the file name. Sorry, look at the file name on the right hand side. We take a look at the file type. We see exactly what camera it was shot with, what lens it was shot with, the resolution of the image. And we've got some in information at the bottom for the star rating and so on. So we can change this to any information that we want that's available within our camera metadata. So if we click to expand the first option, you can see we've got a whole range of options in there we can choose. So I can say, well, I want to see what lens setting I was using. So you can see I was using 42 millimeters on a 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 lens. If that's useful, then we can leave that. They can change the copy, the base name and file name. And we could say, well, what ISO rating was I using on there? What crop dimensions? We could change that to what f-stop. And if I wanted to, I could change the file extension to the exposure and ISO if I wanted to. So you can see we can easily go through and customize exactly what information is displayed on the grid view, which is great. You can also turn on and off any of the information you don't want. You can control exactly how the coloring is applied to these cells. So when you, you rate a particular uh, image and you give it a color rating, you can choose that. So you can see we can choose from 10%, 20%, right the way up to 50%. We can show whether we've got the flags are showing, the thumbnail badges, unsaved metadata. You can see little symbols will appear to tell us different pieces of information. So we've got a whole range of different options available in there. And I would recommend going through, trying them out, seeing exactly what you find useful for yourself, for your own particular workflow, and just enable those and disable the things you don't find useful. So if we switch over to the loop view tab, we can take a look at what options are available in there. So you can see we've now got the normal preview window. And what we can do is we can enable the information overlay. So by default, that's turned off. So if we expand that, you can see it now starts to show us some additional information. So we've got the file name, we've got the date and the time, and we've got the crop resolution of that particular image. And like we could in the grid view, we can change that information to give us more choices. So we can choose from info one and two. So you can see we can switch between two different options, or we can then go through and actually customize each one of those options. So you can say we don't want the copy the file name and the copy name. We might want to have something different. We might want to say the copy name and the file base name. So you can see we can change that. We can do the same again. We could have the capture date and time. We can come through, we can say well common attributes. So we can see whether this has been flagged, if there's any rating or any label. So you can go through and you can choose whatever you think is going to be useful for your particular workflow. And you can see we've got loop info one and loop info two. So we can switch between those and we can also dictate exactly what information is being displayed by each one of those. We can also come down to the general section. You can see we have some additional options there. And again, if you find anything is useful for your particular workflow, enable it. And if you find you don't need it, just disable it. Go through, try it out, see what you think of it. So for this tip, I'm going to take you through and show you one simple change you can make to your image to make your skies really pop out. So as we can see on this image in front of me, I've got a pretty decent exposure on there, but the sky just looks a little bit wishy-washy. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the HSL tab on the develop module on the right hand side. I'm going to scroll down to the luminance section. And as you can see, we have a range of colors we can use on there, or I can use the direct target tool. 
So I can use any of these sliders if I want to, to in, in, adjust them individually, or I can just come up and choose this. And then I can go to an area on the sky that I want to use as my basis, so I want to make sure that I'm on the blue of the sky. Click with the left mouse button and start dragging that down. And you can see that starts to make the blue color really start to punch out. So if we look over on the right hand side now, you can see the aqua and the blue have both been adjusted. And that's now made a massive difference in the sky. So we just turn that on and off. We can take a look at exactly what it looks like before and after. Quite a difference. So for this tip, we're going to switch over to the crop tool. And I'm going to show you how you can change your view on the crop tool and how you can change your orientation very easily. So let's come over and choose the crop tool. I can use, use the crop tool in the develop module on the right hand side, or I can press the keyboard shortcut of R to enable it. So we switch that on and you can see we're now given the rule of thirds outlines, which is great. So we've got the intersecting squares. Well, you may not want to use that one. So if we press the O key on the keyboard, we can start to cycle through the six different options that are available to us. So you can see each time I press the O on the keyboard, we switch to one of the six different layout options. And one other thing, if we want to change this to be in landscape to portrait orientation when we're dealing with the crop, all we need to do is press X to cycle between horizontal and vertical. Simple as that. So this next tip isn't so much what Lightroom can do, but an add-on you can add into Lightroom. And I'll put the link in the description below. Now, something you've been able to do for years in Photoshop is the ability, when you apply a filter, you can then actually adjust how much of that filter is being applied to the image afterwards. You can use a slider to decrease the amount of the effect that's being applied. Lightroom doesn't have anything like that, but we've got a great little add-on that allows us to do that. So if I come to the file menu and I come down to plugin manage, actually plugin extras, you can see I've got one there called the fader. I'll put a description in the uh, link in the description below for this. Instructions on how to install it all inside the zip file that uh, you download. So we expand that out and it gives us a simple dialog box. What it does is it gives us all of the presets that we have installed as part of Lightroom. And then we can choose the individual preset and we can adjust the opacity of that actual effect. So for example, if I choose um, let's go for Lightroom color presets and I choose something along the lines of, let's try yes to you. So you can see that now applies it at 100%. So I can even overemphasize this. I can actually boost this up to 125%. So it gives us extra effect applied on top. So if we increase that, you can see it overemphasizes the effect up to 150, sorry. But what we can do is we can then bring that down and we can use that to mix it with the original image. So we can kind of lessen the effect and we can blend the two together. So you can adjust that as much as you want. You can change different presets. Let's say the cold tone one, and I can adjust that, or I can increase it. So this is a great way of being able to fine tune the effect from one of the presets in Lightroom just by using a simple slider. So there we go. Three power tips to make your life a little bit easier when working inside Lightroom. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button below to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you've got any comments or questions on this video or anything else on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. If you do enjoy the tutorials we put out on this channel, please consider popping over to Amazon where you can purchase the new ebook we've released on the Kindle store, Eight Essential Adobe Lightroom Techniques, where we go into detail about different techniques that every Adobe Lightroom user should really have in their arsenal. The link is in the description below and your support is much appreciated. Well, until next time, take care.